Industrial hardware is a fantastic application for mass production 3D printing because it is designed specifically to do a job. Cosmetics don't really matter, it's not a consumer product, it's just a question of does this do the job cost effectively? And in the case of 3D printing, very often it does. But the problem that we have is that very often the parts inside of industrial manufacturing are designed for other processes like injection molding or machining. But when designing a part with 3D printing, there are different rules and different capabilities that you can get a hold of if you know what you're doing. So in this video, we're gonna go through a very simple example of how the design of an L bracket might actually change when you're designing it for mass production 3D printing and the things to be concerned about and look at while you're doing it. Now, the most simple version of the L bracket is literally just the L bracket, a simple strip of plastic that is shaped into an L. This obviously is not terribly useful in very many places because it's just not very strong or very reliable. And it's not very good for 3D printing in general because the layer lines are gonna cause it to split along the seam. So it's not really something that should ever really be manufactured with printing, but it's the place to start. But if you wanna start beefing it up, the first thing that you would do is go ahead and add a rib, something like this. That's a really easy thing to do, but now, with the rib, you can still make it with 3D printing, but you still have the split danger along the layer lines, and you also have kind of a non-balanced bit of strength there because you only have the rib on one side. But since this is not a part that has to be molded and you have to worry about ejection, you actually can add in another rib onto the other side. Now that's all fine, well, and good, but the problem with the rib on the other side is that if it is too big, it can sometimes require some sort of post-processing afterwards to remove the support material inside of there. So the other rib, while useful, isn't that great, but again, you have so much design freedom now with printing because you're not limited by the tools themselves. Let's take those ribs and just expand them the full distance. Well, now there's actually two different options that you can end up with. Since 3D printing doesn't have to worry about material shrinkage, basically solid volumes are filled in with honeycomb material. They don't really add material to add volume, but you can add a lot of strength. So if you take the ribs and extend them out all the way and basically fill in the entire set of the arms here of a standard L bracket, then you end up with something like this. This is also fairly standard and people have seen it around before, but this part actually cannot be made with traditional sort of molding because it has so many thick areas that it would cause shrinkage if it was ever molded. But you can get the exact same functional parameters out of this where you have two holes on either side, you just make sure to countersink them and leave everything else filled in. But now, with this part, the question then becomes, how do you engineer it for actual mass production? If you wanna make 10,000 of these or even a million of these for long term, how do you wanna design it to actually be printed? Well, most of the time, people would expect to print it like this on its side, but you are having the layer line problem again. You're gonna split right along that perforated edge you've created from your screw holes. So most people would then flip it up onto its edge like this, where it's at a right angle, but now this side could break off when it's loaded up on a piece of extrusion like this. So you don't want to print it like that. Well, then other folks would say, well, go ahead and print it forward like this. This is actually a really good idea because now you have the looping of the layer lines actually creating more strength, much like the way you would lash two posts together in a ship by using the strength of the rope to hold them together. This is something that you can do because all of the individual beads of plastic come together to wrap around the holes themselves. But this has the downside of having a lot of surface contact area with the build plate, which isn't always the most ideal situation. So actually, what you really wanna do, if you possibly can, is print it like this, standing up on its end. This means that it can be very easily ejected from the machine, but also has all the same reliability and strength as everything else. But the problem with this is that you can have cooling issues if they're very steep overhangs, and you could have uh, rejection issues if the contact area is so small that it causes the part to fall over while it's printing. So you wanna make that interface area as big as possible without making it too big. And this is always kind of a case by case on the part, so just be aware of it. But that is kind of the optimum traditional L bracket that you can make with 3D printing. You can basically just add in a ton of volume and get more strength than you would have from any sort of extruded or even molded model where you have to go for as thin as possible. Here you can go for beefy, chunky, so that you can actually get real strength out of the part. But we can take this a step further. 3D printing allows you to create impossible geometries. If we go back and rewind to where we were extending the ribs all the way to the outside, why do we want this to be a system 
where this L bracket sits on the inside just like that and is then screwed in. You have multiple screws, there's a lot of assembly, a lot of man hours and I'm putting this together. What if you could just eliminate two of these screws or maybe all of the screws even? You could save yourself a lot of man hours in assembly by creating a geometry that wasn't possible before. Well, the way to do this is to actually go ahead and wrap around the outside of this extrusion and basically create a slotted L bracket where the parts slot it into it. And this is a really good way to do it. And you end up with something like this, where the bracket itself plugs in and comes together. This isn't necessarily a new idea, but it gives you the advantage of having fewer screws because rather than having two screws to make sure that the thing doesn't twist around and has a good grip on it, you can just have one that is basically a finding feature that holds the aluminum in place but isn't really structural. But you also have the advantage of this being the cap as well as the bracket itself. Whereas with this, once you put them together, you still have this naked end sticking out that can need some extra assembly or an extra plastic part. So going with this more covered up kind of looped design is handy. But the problem is, is that again, we come back to that problem of what orientation do you print this in? Almost everybody will design it and try to print it like this, which means that you might possibly have to have support in there if this is large enough. If you're making a really large piece, then you might need support inside of there. Generally not. But then you also have the strength issue where if it's printed like this, and then you put it into a piece of extrusion and you reef on it, it will break. How can you get the full strength of the plastic out of this part? Well, again, we go back to that orientation thing where you design it to be printed like this. Now, again, as it grows, it's basically creating loops of plastic around the extrusion itself so that there are continuous connected areas where right here, you have a full continuous piece of plastic all the way around the outside and the inside of this aluminum extrusion. So this is as strong as it can possibly be. It's popping, but it's not really gonna break unless I really get on it, because it is just plastic, but it's as strong as any other isotropic type of part would be. So this gives you a huge advantage because you can make this thick part that is still very lightweight because it's technically hollow, but you have all the exterior strength that you would have with any other process. So this right here is the optimum way to make an L bracket because number one, it is as strong as any other process would ever create. It is very cost effective because it's been optimized for the 3D printing process. And it gives you advantages that you never had before because you can use fewer fasteners, you get more parts consolidated because you no longer have end caps. And since it's, you can make a big old thick chunky part, rather than having a nasty little bolted L bracket inside of the thing, you can actually have this nice clean end socket that fits everything together, plugs together. You can put in one screw in there to hold it all together. And now you have a part that is not just equivalent to what the old solution was, but better. 3D printing enables all kinds of new capabilities that were never possible before. When you're designing your piece of industrial hardware, whether it's an L bracket or something more complex like an electrical enclosure or some other sort of interface inside of a factory or a plant or inside of your supply chain, take into consideration the fact that you can mass produce parts with 3D printing and do it cost effectively. And you can get all kinds of new benefits that you never had available before if you actually design for the process. Have a great day, everybody.